Hello, welcome back to another quick modeling tip. Uh, we're going to continue on from our last video, which was uh, setting up Mesa for Maya, but now we're going to actually export a model from, from Maya for source using Mesa. Uh, and in this, we're going to use a diversified approach. Um, in my experience, using Mesa alone to compile models works sometimes, sometimes it doesn't work. So we're just going to uh, make this as frustration free as possible. And uh, hopefully you've set up GUI Studio Modeler, or Crowbar, or whatever else you use to compile to do the compiling bit. And uh, we'll create the v we'll create everything else kind of as trouble-free as possible, uh, from what I can tell. So let's run off. Uh, let's go over a summary of what we're going to do. Uh, step one: We're going to create your model, and uh, this is something you'll do on your own. Uh, essentially, you're going to model your actual model. Basically, uh, you're going to work with the UVs and then you're going to add a root bone. Um, the root bone is important for SFM because otherwise you're going to create, create it randomly whenever you create your model, uh, you compile your model for source. So it's good to go ahead and lay down a, a single bone that's attached to your model uh, when you do that, uh, when you get ready to, to go. Step two, we're going to create PST networks and save a target out for the actual material. Um, we'll create the PST in, in network in Maya, basically, and uh, we'll edit it a little bit. Uh, we'll save the PST in the target file, essentially, and uh, get the right shader type, and then assign target finally as uh, the color. And we'll explain why this is important when we get to it. Step three, we'll set up layers for reference and physics. Basically, this is important for Mesa to actually know what needs to be compiled as what. Uh, so we'll do that. Uh, and step four, we'll set up SMD options. This is basically going to, we're going to tell the compiler or we'll tell the tool what we want it to do, as well as generate the paths where it's going to export stuff out to. Uh, and we're going to prefer using external compiler for this, so that's the workflow we're going to use until it becomes more stable. Step five, we'll do a full compile, and that's full compile as it's shown in Mesa. We're not going to do a full compile as in the things done. Uh, and then we're going to edit the QC file once that's generated the QC file and the SMDs. Uh, we'll change some certain things about it. And then we'll actually compile in GUI Studio MDL. Or you can use Crowbar if you want. Step six, we're going to create the VMT and VTF files. And uh, we'll explain what these are basically uh, and how to do this. And step seven, we'll finally, uh, we'll finally we'll test. We'll, we'll open the Half-Life Model Viewer and then open SFM. So let's go back to step one. Step one, we're going to actually model our model. And I won't do this here. Uh, but I will show you is how to do add a root bone. All right. This is the model we're working with. I've already saved it the scene as the model name I want it to be called, which is tutorial. This is kind of important. Uh, this is what uh, generate pass will create. Uh, so just call it whatever the model you want it to be called is. So we'll call it tutorial. And uh, we've already, we're gonna leave the default UV set. We're not gonna mess with that. It's not important for this particular model. But if you know how to do UVs and you're doing a complex model, that's up to you to figure out how to do in your 3D program, which hopefully is Maya. Um, but we have created a bone here using the uh, animations up here uh, and then the skeleton joint tool. And then we took the joint tool and made a, the first joint right here, which is the root. And then this is the second uh, joint that I added. And then we're going to basically bind this to this mesh right now. So we're going to uh, first open our tool settings and we'll close our outliner. We'll click our model and we'll go to skin. I don't know if I ever did that. Okay, yeah, so that's... Um, I just did that anyway, sorry about that. Uh, we're going to click our model and we're going to go to uh, skin, paint skin weights tools, and we don't want to mess with joint two. Joint two, we don't actually want any influence on. This is going to be a root bone right over here. Uh, so we're going to pass the one value one, and we're just going to quickly 
add that influence. Now this is just for the root bone. If you've got something that's already rigged, uh, don't do this. Uh, but for this particular, mo particular model, we want it to be kind of like controlled by that one root bone. Um, kind of works better when you have more geometry. But whatevs. Alright, so even though it's not working, it's, that's, uh, we'll just deal with it. Always save your work, you never know when it's going to crash, uh, especially with doing Mesa tools. Um, so we're done with uh, skin waiting. And we've bound it, so let's go ahead and we'll work on the materials next. Alright, step two is to create the actual PST networks in the target file. Now why do we want to do this? Because we want to be able to create a texture, a, a, a editable uh, PSD from which you can edit the textures later on. Uh, and Maya does a really good job of creating texture PD PSDs and you can save different targets out, which is what you'll have to use to bring in the VTF edit. Um, so we're going to create the, the network, we're going to edit it in Photoshop, and we'll save the PSD file and we'll save the target file, which we'll use later. And then we're going to assign a Fong E shader type, which is what it needs to work. And finally, we'll assign the Targa as a color. So to do this, we want to go ahead and up, open up a two window kind of view and then change the left one or however you want to work to the UV texture editor. As you can see, we've got a basic um, thing here. And we want to go to the uh, Create PSD Network. Now, when it opens up the PSD Network options, uh, you want to change this to what you want. It's just for convenience uh, to what you want your VMT to be called. It just early on, you want to go ahead and take care of this stuff. So I'm going to go ahead and make my. I want my VMT to be called Tutorial. So we'll just delete that part. I want it to open in Photoshop. This is the maximum size it allows, 2048. Uh, now you want to make sure your model is selected, of course. Not doing that apparently, it changes the name. And you want to include a UV snapshot. UV snapshot basically is this, this line structure. And I'll add it as a different layer in Photoshop so you can tell where you're actually drawing at on that model, more or less. Down here, we've already got a Fong E shader, uh, but we'll go ahead and show you how to do it later on. Um, you're probably looking at, um, you'll want to probably do the, the color. Mostly, if you're doing a bump that's different, you know, you have a, diff a bunch of different options here, uh, which you can use later on in your VNT file, but that's for a different time. For now, we'll just use the uh, the color. All right. Now that we've opened up Photoshop, we have we show the UV snapshots. Uh, we have a color layer, and you'd have more folders here based off what parts of the the shader you wanted to use. Now, you can work within the shader. You can um, you can have as many layers as you want. You know, uh, we'll just say the default one. Uh, and we can save it out already. We've, we'll assume that we're not making any changes to it, but you can make changes to it and save it, at whatever you want to do. Uh, we'll hit Control S for saving, and then we want to export this as, or we want to save as a uh, target file. And I've already done this before, so we'll just go ahead and do it again. Actually, what you really want to do is turn off the UV snapshots because uh, <laughs> if you don't, it'll show up on your model. Not a PNG. Target file. All right. So you've saved your PSD file. You've saved your Targa. So now we're going to go in here to Maya. Back to your Maya. Click your model. And we want to open up your attribute editor. And 
how you assign a Fong E to begin with, which is what I didn't show you, I should have showed you first off, was um, assign new material, and you just assign a Fong, a Fong E. Um, and I guess we can do it anyway. Uh, we can uh, change, when I click, you can change the color of it like this if you want, but because we're going to use a pre-made texture, uh, we'll just go ahead and hit this checker box over here and go to file. And here's where we can set the name. Now, if you created a PSD network, uh, that's good for creating the PSDs, but you're not going to be able to use the PSD in the actual texture when you export it out because uh, it's expecting a target file for if you're doing the uh, VTF creation through Mesa. Um, just an extra step, not a big deal. So we'll open up this. All right, so you should have saved it in your project directory, which is in your project and then material source directory. As you see, I have a bunch of stuff here. Um, we're going to find our target file and go ahead and sign that. And it brought it back. So now finally, we want to actually add DMT attributes to the actual model itself. So we'll go ahead and go up here to add DMT attributes. And you may not see anything. Um, but that's okay. At this point, you want to go ahead and save, and we'll move on to our next step. All right, step three is actually setting up layers for the reference and physics models. Now, reference is what you'll see. Physics is what Gmod uses to actually uh, do the physics with. So um, we'll first create the layers in the layer editor, and we're going to duplicate the, we're going to duplicate, well, we're going to name our model that we just created as reference, and we'll duplicate it, and then we'll name that duplicate as physics, and then we're going to assign them to their, their layers they need. So, we're going to go back to uh, our attribute editor here. We've already got this called reference. Um, to, to change it, you can change it to different places, uh, like right there, but it's easier to just go ahead and just double-click that and, and, and change it. But we'll go ahead and select it, hit Control D to duplicate, and then we'll rename this as physics. All right. Now, to see your layers, you need to go over here to the um, channel box layer editor tool. And as you see, we have nothing here for the layers. Now, you can create them yourself manually, or you can do it super easily by going to the layer editors, the layers editor button right here and you'll just do the basic reference fizz layer or file layer and then you have to actually assign those models to these layers to do that you want to right click in the general area go to membership and here is where you have your layers and the items in your uh, in your uh, outliner here so we'll go ahead and start with the physics layer since it's on top and we'll go over here to physics it's very important to make sure you get both of these objects right here underneath the physics um, node there because otherwise it won't work. Now I'll switch to reference and do the same for reference. And now you're done. And you can always check it by going back to membership or staying in membership and then just checking to see if you have two, two nodes underneath each layer. Go ahead and save it. And now it's time to move on to the next step. Now step two, four is to actually set up the SMD options. Uh, we're going to generate, generate our paths, we're going to set our options, and we're gonna to prefer to use an external compiler. Um, now you can, and then next up you'll do full compile. If you can either do a full compile, not do a full compile, doesn't really matter. Uh, we're going to go ahead and set it up to do the full compile, but the full compile is going to fail because I don't have it set up right uh, for the compiler. And I like using external anyway. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, back in Maya, we're going to uh, go to SMB options and we'll go ahead and set our paths first. Uh, you won't see anything here, but I already have done this before. So I'll go ahead and regenerate paths and I'll create those paths for you. Uh, you don't want to type it in up here. It's just going to uh, pull it from where you saved your file from. That's why it's kind of important to save your your scene file as the model name you want it to be called because it's going to use that. Because even if you like change this name, it's not going to be like 
yeah, it's not going to change these down here. So just save it. Save your scene file as what you want it to be called. Um, now we're going to go to the export options. We've talked about these in the uh, last video, uh, but we're going to leave. We're going to turn on reference and physics model. They're on by default, but leave them. Uh, we're not doing any animations in this model. Uh, in the we're not exporting animations. We're just going to do a static idle. So leave that the way it is. Um, I don't use these, but you can try them out if you want to. This option creates your VTF and VMT. Uh, it's kind of weird. Uh, it expects a folder to be created, and it doesn't create the folder for you. I don't know why, what the point that is. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to leave the create QC file, QC script on because I want it to uh, create that for me. And I'm going to turn off compile MDL because um, it's, 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 worth, it's easier to do it in an external compiler because uh, there's error sometimes. So we're going to hit OK settings. We're going to hit Control Save. And uh, the reason why you do this is because sometimes if you're working on something and then you move on to doing it compile, it's going to um, it's it may crash on you. So so on step five, we we're going to full compile, and um, we'll edit the we'll do a full compile to, to generate those QCs and SMDs. Uh, and then we're going to edit the QC file, and then we're going to pile it itself in our program of choice. So as we did in the last op set, we uh, set our paths, we set our options here. Uh, we don't want to create the VTF or VMT here. We don't want to compile the model either. either. Uh, so, But we'll do a hit, hit full compile, which will use these options that we've set. And that'll create the QC file. That'll create the SMD, SMDs. So... Now what we can do is we can go and look into um, go look in our model folder, model source folder, SRC folder, and as you see, we have a QC file, SMB file, a PHY, SMD, an idle. This is your reference. This is your physics. This is your idle animation. This is QC script. We're going to uh, edit this, and I prefer Notepad plus plus. Otherwise, the line breaks would be kind of weird. Um, and now. We want to uh, look at what we can do here. To explain what this is, is a basic QC file, which it'll create a tutorial.mdl. We can change that if we want to here. CD materials will tell the model to look at materials folder in user mod. Now, I don't want to do that. I want to look in mo materials models, models slash props slash quotation mark um i'll leave scale as one you can go back and change it if you want to you can change the type of it from like default to wood or metal whatever you have to use the specific options built into source which you can find on the wiki this is the smd file it's looking for don't add the smd you don't have to uh for this it's already going to have the the idle and the fizz this is where you can set the actual weight for, say, Gmod. And just add it to five. Other options, go ahead and hit save. Now we can go and open um, GUI Studio MDL. All right, so we've, we're going to use GUI Studio MDL. There's plenty of tutorials on how to actually set this up for the compiler in Source Filmmaker, uh, the directory. Um, I'm not going to teach you how to do that because that's outside the scope of this tutorial. Um, but I'm sure the people out there who can help you out with that. So we're going to open our QC file, which is in model source. And we'll find tutorial QC file and we'll compile. All right, we have completed uh, compiling our model for the first run. And now it's time to create, uh, on step six, we're going to create our VMT and VTF files. Now, the VMT file is the name of the material material we call the target file, and then assigned in Maya. So we called it tutorial, so it's expecting a tutorial.vmt file. Otherwise, it won't know what, it won't find the VMT it's expecting if you don't call it what it's expecting. So it's kind of important to make sure you take care of that in, um, Take care of that in Maya before you create the SMB file. 
you can open the SMD file in a text editor, and then you can find, say, it's looking for tutorial underscore p, uh, p shape one or whatever dot t tga. You can change that into a, a multiple find and replace in the SMD file and recompile it that way, or you can just correct it in Maya. Uh, it doesn't matter. It's just pre-compile. You have to get it fixed before you can get to work. You have to compile it after you fixed it so that your now your model works. So we'll look at you know building a basic VMT file um, that'll just do our basic color map and then we're going to import the, the TGA file to VTF edit and save as VTF. All right so we are now in um, user mod and uh, Remember, we, we changed it from CD materials, which was would put it right here in materials, where I don't want it to be at. Uh, we want it to be in models. This is just this is just example. You don't have to use models props, so wherever you want to put it. But what's important is you have the folder, the folders there uh, before you try to do all this. Try to because you'll be like, why the hell is my thing not working? You've got to have the folders as they as they expect. So we already created the models props folder. And we've got we already we've already created this. I did this. This is the second time doing this tutorial, but I'll show you what you have to do in the tutorial VMT. Uh, if you don't have an example, what you'll do is you'll go in here and you'll create a new VMT file. You'll open VTF Edit and you'll do like new, and then you want to uh, change this. I'll go ahead and compare them. All right, so we want to use vertex lit generic, not light map generic. Uh, color, we'll use that. And then the base texture here, we want to point to the path. This is assuming user mod materials. And then this is where we have models, props, tutorial. And tutorial is our BTF file. So at this point we would save it we've got a VTF file um, it's already there but I'll show you how you do it anyway uh, now you want to create your VTF file by going to uh, VTF edit you want to import that target file which is going to be for me my project folder uh, where to go uh, project files. No, 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 absolutely not. I don't know where I'm doing it. <laughs> source filmmaker, which is our Mesa project source filmmaker. And then we want to go to material source and we want to find our target, which is tutorial.targa. Uh, leave these settings by default, unless you know what you're doing. All right, I'm gonna save as. I'm gonna go back to your user mod directory, which I have right here. Materials, models, props, twirl VTF. Now this is what the v VMT is looking for is this first part of the file name, the uh, tutorial that, the tutorial. At the VTF part, it assumes VTF, so I'll do that, and you should be good to go for the textures. Hopefully, if you did everything right, uh, if you did not, this is a, where we're going to test it and see what happens. All right, step seven is to uh, actually test the model, and we're going to open a Half-Life model viewer first, just so we can see the errors going on, and correct it. You don't want to open us. Open SFM first because you'll be dealing with memory leaks and um, other things that keep the model and it wastes so much time if you're doing it like that. You're, we're trying to debug the first go around with the model. So uh, let's do that. All right, so you could use the source SDK, but for me, it doesn't work that well. So I'm going to use the, source, the SDK in uh, Source Filmmaker launch. Uh, we'll use model viewer and we'll 
load up our model. And as you see, we've got our model. The, there's no pink and black checkers that's not missing a, a texture, nothing. Uh, if you are missing, if you see like a pink thing, uh, look for, look in this tab, the, um, the model tab. And it may see something like, uh, cannot find VNT, cannot load VNT, whatever. Uh, that's probably, if you get that error, that basically means that either your VTF is not correct, it's not where it's expecting it at, as in you didn't set the path, for, and then you didn't set the put the VMT in that path that it was expecting, uh, or your SNB file, you didn't you didn't change the material name of your model in Maya before you exported SMD and then compiled. Uh, so go back and see if any of that's wrong, if you're missing a VMT file. Because even if you have a VMT file, it's called exactly what you think it's supposed to be called and the the vtf's there it could be that you're missing say the um it, the snd is saying expecting something else so keep that in mind and then this point we're going to op open up source filmmaker All right, we have a source of maker scene open and we're going to export, uh, import a model, sorry. And um, you wanna check, make sure that you have user mod selected. And this is MDL files. And then you can either search for it or do what I do is basically the first part of it and find it up here. And now we have our model in front of our camera. So this is why it's kind of important to have the uh, model centered on your grid and your bone, your root bone there because as you can see, if we go in here to the uh, root transform of the body, we have a perfectly aligned bone. Uh, it, it, whenever you're compiling and making a model, uh, sometimes it, it requires a bone. If you don't put a bone in there, it'll add a bone itself. Sometimes it'll be all wonky. Uh, so make sure you have all that figured out before you go and do it. Otherwise, you'll have some you know, hard times. But this is all you have to do. Once you've got it tested, your model now works. You can put it on the Steam Workshop. You can, you know, package it up. Uh, in fact, I'll show you how to package it up. And uh, maybe I won't. I'll show you. Okay, yeah, maybe I will. Um, what you really want to do when you do this, when you create, say, a... Uh, tutorial model and you'll make this a RAR file eventually or a zip file you'll want to create your materials you'll, you want to create your folder structure that it, it's going to be copied into um, some materials models we'll leave models where it's at and materials will create where it's expecting models and then props. So then what you would do is you would bring your your VTF and VMT files to this, this, this folder, and then you would go to your user mod models, and you would find your tutorial, tutorial, uh, there we go, right there these four files, however many that are called that name, and you would just bring that to models folder. And then you can package up an archive file and just bring it into DeviantArt or whatever. But that's all you have to do. So uh, take care.